Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharatiya, and welcome to our super popular yearly prediction video series. And today we have with us once again Ram Iyengar, Chief Evangelist at Cloud Foundry Foundation. Ram, it's great to have you back on this uh, prediction series. Hey, Swapnil, it's nice to be back. It's my pleasure. And of course, I'm going to ask you to grab a crystal ball and share your predictions. But before that, just quickly remind our viewers what is Cloud Foundry Foundation all about? So, the Cloud Foundry Foundation is a Linux Foundation project around Cloud Foundry, the platform that everybody loves, and a lot of projects that are affiliated to Cloud Foundry and are a part of the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. We manage governance and the community around this open source project. And like I said, it's a part of the Linux Foundation. Perfect, thank you. Now it's time for you to grab a crystal ball and share your predictions with us. My predictions for 2025 are a little broad this year. So I have something to do with compute. I have uh, something related to platforms and platform engineering as a whole. And that includes a little bit of AI. <laughs> and finally, I have a little bit of a theme going with open source security. So these are going to be my three big things. In terms of the compute part, I predict that 2025 is going to be the year that unikernels make a comeback. The history of unikernels has always been very sinusoidal. It always you know, comes into focus and then disappears for a while and then comes back into focus again. However, we're living at an amazing point in time where there's a lot of interest in hyperscalers, obviously. So you want bigger and larger compute and, you know, with the kind of uh, workloads that we're seeing right now, people are betting on like quantum for compute. But I'm at the other end of the spectrum where I'm predicting that because of its very unitary nature, unikernels are going to sort of make a comeback this year because they can be fast, because they can be efficient, because they can promise, you know, millisecond cold start times and things like that. Especially if you look at a recent announcement from Microsoft about Hyperlight and then how popular Amazon Firecracker VMs have been getting. I think, you know, unikernels are prime for making a comeback. My second prediction is around something slightly more general purpose, which is the whole platform engineering movement, which is predominantly been focused around general purpose platforms, general developer experience, getting more efficiency for organizations out of their compute, out of their tools and things like that is going to make a massive foray into AI. So we're going to start seeing the rise of and the standardization of AI platforms. So people are going to want a more consumable experience around AI. And right now, it, there's a lot of sprawl. There's not, you know, a lot of clarity about this is the standard path or this is the golden path that any engineer on the team needs to take in order to make the most or maximize an AI investment. And I think in the coming year, people are really going to be able to do that. There's a there's a sort of, you know, explosion in the AI platform space. I think we'll start to see some players emerge, certain patterns emerge and certain winners come out with a playbook that's really good for engineering teams to adopt vis-a-vis -vis AI tools. And lastly, because of this, you know, increase in all of the tooling that I predict, and because a lot of this tooling is again going to be open source, obviously, I predict that open source security is going to get much more of a mainstream focus than ever before. We've seen a handful of uh, supply chain attacks in the past few years. We've seen very pointed supply chain issues just this last year in 2024. I think 2025 is the year that we are going to get teams more focused on this notion of supply chain security for their software, start to be more prepared, look at more t tools emerge, look at more teams taking the effort to standardize security in a way that we've never seen before. So this is 
my prediction for 2025 in a nutshell the comeback of unikernels platforms that are going to be ai specific and dominate that space and finally security of the software supply chain can you also talk about what kind of challenges you see are going to be there new challenges of course looking at the predictions that you just made not only for the cloud foundry foundation for the whole cncf uh, ecosystem and even for uh, players in this space i think we can break it down top down in terms of the open source ecosystem like i mentioned is going to have supply chain security challenges the foremost i grew up thinking that if i use open source nothing bad could ever befall me <laughs> and and for the past 20 years you know it's been sort of a bubble and we are at a point where the bubble is sort of starting to burst and the ability to secure supply chains is going to be very important for enterprises of any nature but especially those that are invested heavily in open source now the cnc ecosystem is not you know immune to this problem and in addition to that there's a lot more in terms of licensing and patent trolls and some other security issues that plague that ecosystem as well not to mention the cncf ecosystem is growing and you know there's there's a lot more to do in terms of educating people about hey here's the things that you can consume from the cncf and here's things that you need to do a little more in order to be able to consume so really there needs to emerge a kind of maturity and some paths that people can take and finally for the cloud foundry ecosystem that sort of overlaps a little bit with the cncf world but also a little bit with like the open source world both of these challenges exist but i think interoperating with a lot of the new technologies and preparing to find a footing inside the cncf ecosystem while balancing existing other priorities in terms of the original cloud foundry platform and making sure all of this is a seamless converged experience is a is a big challenge for uh, the coming year and one that i think the community is you know quite prepared to meet and tackle excellent thank you now i also want to you know uh, ask you something like all of us you know we want certain things to happen but given the market or community reality that might not happen so what are the things on your wish list or community's wish list hey we would love to see that in 2025 but you also know that will not happen what are those i really wish in 2025 that there emerges a standard within the cncf for how to manage scale and operate deployments as one of the many opinionated paths that are available i know that there are a couple of projects in the cncf that are doing this uh, there's a microsoft submission called radius there's obviously the cloud foundry communities work that's happening but i wish that more platforms emerge in the same space there's there's like maybe like two dozen platforms that are already doing this but they're not submitted to the cncf so i wish more people submit the entire notion of paved paths grow and you know the cloud native ecosystem becomes easier to consume now given that there's a lot more infrastructure blocks that are available and the number of projects on top are increasing i think this middle layer that sort of helps manage the infrastructure and the applications that run on top of it in the form of a standardized platform for cloud native would really really make me happy asian when we look at these predictions and uh, these challenges what is going to be the focus of cloud foundry foundation in 2025 so for the cloud foundry foundation in particular i think the key is to strike a balance there exists cloud foundry that is designed to run on vms and scale well and support planet scale workloads that project is already helping companies make you know several millions of dollars and it's a very viable commercial project so alongside that we are also working on a cloud native version of cloud foundry 
which we call Cloud Foundry Query Fee. And it uses certain modern projects, some of which are from the CNCF landscape, like Cert Manager, for example, and Envoy and things like that, while also using certain other things like Cloud Native Build Packs, some UAA, authorized like user management stuff and good ways to do multi-tenancy, which we borrow from the traditional Cloud Foundry world. And so I think the community needs to balance its priorities and find ways to make both of these work and move both of these projects forward in their own right. And Cloud Foundry, I think, is right now positioned to be one of the best ways if you want to manage both VM-based compute and applications or Kubernetes-based compute and applications or Kubernetes-based workloads. So we really want to further the story and make Cloud Foundry the you know standard way if you want to manage hybrid kind of workloads. Speaking of focus areas, one focus area for the foundation and the community is going to be around what I consider the cloud native community's best kept secret, which are cloud native build packs. So there's a massive community within the Heroku side of things and also a fledgling community within the Cloud Foundry space and also like a growing community of adopters outside of these two main supporters who are really backing cloud native build packs. It's been growing. A lot of big organizations have found favor. Everybody that I've showed it to in like KubeCons and other events really love the concept. And I think the project is really going to pick up in 2025 and see some accelerated growth. And we might see it graduate as well. So I'm really hoping that 2025 is the year that build packs also come to fruition. And I think that will also be a focus for the foundation and our community. Ram, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Share your predictions. Of course, we'll have you again next year to see how many of your predictions turn out to be true. Well, that's just a joke because I'm not holding a score for, for from the last year, but we will get you back on the show to get next set of predictions. Thanks for your insights today. And I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. Thanks, Swapnil. I can't believe it's been a year since uh, the last predictions video. But yeah, I really look forward to, you know, working with you in the new year and um, doing a lot more. Thank you again for having me.